Hi everybody, it's uh, Saturday, May 14th. It's 3.30 and about 75 degrees. And we are here at Sessions Woods in Bristol. And we have the kiosk of all kiosks here. I'm with my guest here, special guest Dave Connolly. Not only is he a special guest, he's an old friend going way, way back to, oh man, like 20 years or yeah, so. Yeah, right? 25 years. A long time ago. He's a great musician. Tell us about your gigs coming up, Dave, and, and about your music. Well, we have, uh, I play in a band that does uh, town town greens and uh, festivals, so we'll be doing the Durham Fair this year. Oh, wow. Um, uh, I have a bluegrass band. We're going to be playing at Lyman Orchards soon. Oh, we just did a video at Lyman oh, Orchards. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, that was really yeah. cool. Lyman Orchards. And Lyman Orchards. Uh, 11 to 3. So we'll be there. Nice. We'll be there and check out his music. Slewfoot is the name of the band. Slewfoot. Slewfoot. Yeah. Not Bigfoot. Not Slewfoot. Bigfoot. It is a cryptid band, though. Yeah. So here we are. Uh, it's well delineated, the miles around. Uh, this is probably like more of a family type place. Wouldn't you agree, Dave? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. For kids and stuff like that. We were just talking about um, how they do have a theater here, mm -hmm. uh, which is really cool. It's an outdoor theater. And maybe someday we could do it. And they seem to have this this tower here. Do you know where this is, Dave? Uh, I've never been to that particular tower. It's the fire right tower. There. You know we but love. But yeah, our... it's kind of like where the trails go. You'll see that there's trails that kind of lead around. Right. And um, right yeah, here. they're that. So I don't know if I've ever actually Coming been to it, there. but it's the viewing blind is really great because you get to see the wetlands. Yep. Um, and uh, another great thing is the waterfall. If you haven't seen that because they have a really nice waterfall right down here we're gonna go see them yep. dave so dave you ever had any experiences in the woods with something anomalous you couldn't explain or? um i've had a lot of supernatural experiences oh yeah i don't know if i've had any in particular with Bigfoot bigfoot or uh nothing that i could definitely say it was but um yeah i don't know i mean for me it's more of an intellectual curiosity i've always wanted to i've looked yeah, but I, I've never seen anything that I would say I was in close proximity to one. Yeah, I've seen stuff that maybe was caused by them, whether it's structures or footprints or damage or whatever. I've seen that, but I've never, never saw a fuzzy guy in the woods until today. Until He's got today, one right here, here at Sessions Woods in Bristol, Connecticut. <laughs> this guy, you're a natural, Dave. <laughs> We're really, I'm so glad to have him here, and it's just good to see my old friend. We're gonna follow him. He's he knows this place better than we do, and then of course we'll howl. We'll howl in the woods and smack some trees. Yeah, right. Yep. It's way cheaper than a therapist. Uh, if you want to do it, I'll set you up for like like a hundred dollar sessions, and and you can just go and howl in the woods and smack trees. But don't do it without a professional. Hire us. We know what we're doing. That's we, right. We've been screaming in the woods and, and smacking trees for. You know a long time now. Professional tree smackers. We are professional tree smackers so you got to know what kind of uh, stick to use and you know what kind of tree. Yep. You know some people talk about the rock clapping. You heard rock clapping? Yeah but I have heard Have that. you ever tried it? I've never tried it. Well don't do it because I every time I do it when the rocks smack together the only thing that happens is it hurts the crap out of your hands. Yes. Yeah and, and it's like I can't imagine a Bigfoot doing that with you know those hands and that strength. It makes no sense. I can, yeah, well, that. But even if you were going to do it, I, I'd say you probably want to take a smaller rock and hit a bigger rock that's on the ground. We're going to try that. We're going to take his advice. See, that's why you call in the experts. That's right. Don't, don't try this at home. Squatching at home is not going to be good for you. <laughs> so we're going to get in there. Where are we going to, Dave? This is the Beaver Pond Trail. We're going to pass a waterfall. We're going to pass a uh, tree identification trail. So it's nothing around there they have all the trees marked so you can tell what they are there's going to be uh, I think we'll pass the water tower and the, and the trail goes all the way around and we'll hit a lot of really cool spots let's get in there this is great I'm loving it
telling you to watch out for bears and poison ivy. Yep. Always good advice. Personally, the bears, I don't know, they don't bother me. It's the freaking ticks. Those things. Yes. Thank you, Plum Gut Island. We really appreciate your weaponized and genetically modified ticks. Project Paperclip. Project Paperclip. That's why you got to bring the ass to experts. What about it? They're talking about that. Project Paperclip is when they brought the Nazi scientists over, CIA, to have them work for the American government. So one of the scientists that did that was uh, responsible for the tick research done on Plum Island. And, uh, and they know that he did the same research by transmitting diseases via ticks in, while he was in Nazi Germany. So that was, it was intentionally planned for him to come over and do that. And then those ticks made their way over to the mainland. On the seagull. The which seagulls. they didn't plan we talked about that flew over in seagulls because you know scientists are so there's such geniuses that they overlook the obvious yes seagulls get on the ground they're going to get ticks and they're airborne and then they're going to drop them off in lyme connecticut and then you get what lyme disease lyme disease and and the other new ones that they're coming they've improved upon lyme disease they're getting close to fatal now so here we are another kiosk oh look at this Coyotes have been reported oh, in this area, nice. so that's nice. Anytime you got coyotes, you got the potential for a dog man. There are a lot of reports of dog man, sort of, and Bigfoot. It's interesting hmm. keeping coyotes as pets, if you will. Um, they'll they'll sort of eat what's left over and sniff them out, and oh, then wow. your 800 pound cryptid comes along with one punch and game over. Yeah. All right, we're gonna make some trails here. Obviously, we'll see you when they're a little further. We'll get we'll get to talking with a friend and our special guest Dave Connolly and pick his brain a little bit more. If he's got Operation Paperclip, he's got more. Maybe we'll have him talk about Project Grudge and Sign. Oh, oh, right? oh, that's, that's, that's good stuff. We got flocks here and I see another flower here and uh, I'll find out for you right now if it's a forage base or not. That's nice, kind of sweet. Camera person's gonna try pine today. Yes, they are. <laughs> you ever tried pine? Yeah, I've had pine. He's see, what's your favorite? Something pine? Yeah. So what I like to do with pine is I like to boil the needles. That's the it. second person that said that to yeah. me today. You boil the needles, then what? Then you drink it as a tea. And you get that nice pine freshness going and on. And the vitamin C. And the vitamin C. Five times more than oranges. Camera person's gonna try it. <laughs> So the conservation in Connecticut's been pretty good. It has been. We've been doing a much better job lately. Um, when I was a kid, and I'm 900 years old, just like Yoda, uh, there was nothing. It was just polluted rivers, and yep, uh, it was nasty. It's much nicer now. Even even in your urban areas, the trees are you know incrementally getting back to where they should have been. Now you've been down to Birch Pond and the Hoppers. No, we have not. Oh, I thought you did the Hoppers. This guy knows everything. Well, they did so. They they dredged all the ponds in the Bristol area because you know, they were just full of garbage, and they actually emptied the entire pond, several I think three ponds in Bristol, including the hoppers, and uh, then they cleaned out the bottom, and then they reintroduced the water and reintroduced wildlife because it was just so bad. And there's a waterfall that we used to hang out as kids, and it was just full of garbage. Like Chopping carts and stuff. Rusty paint cans, yeah. We, we would go fishing, and we could see that there were tires in, in there. And, um, so it's really cool that they've done that. Even the Pequotic River that runs through Bristol. Yes, we were just there. There was a big um, deal when I was in middle school. There was a big deal in the paper. They found fish in the Pequotic River. They found fish in a river, and yeah. it made the news. Yep, because there were no fish in for, for ever because of all the dumping. There was even like a... A uh, famous local chicken place, Greer's Chicken, which is, if you ever want fried chicken, that's where you go. But they used to slaughter their own chickens, and they had a blood run right in the back that Ugh. led right to the Pequotic River. And it was very common at the time for people to just dump all their shit right in the river. Right. And that's how they did it. Um, and now the Pequotic is a trophy trout stream. Yep. So when you come to this place, if you want to follow our track, make sure you get on the Ukraine Trail. <laughs> okay? That's what this is. And, and it does lead to, the blue trail does go to the Ukraine, and you know what, Russia, you're getting a zero on the Squatch, you're getting a negative infinity on the Squatch-a-meter, 
Now we're not putting Russian people down, but your culture, I mean your culture is awesome, but your government, negative infinity. You suck forever. Ukraine, you guys are rocking. Zelensky, Zelensky's half Squatch. Everyone knows this well-known fact in the Squatch community. And the other half is just badass politicians. So there are some good ones. Follow us on the Ukraine trail. Set up as an educational area so people can learn what trees actually look like. Because we talk about oak trees and ash trees and bath trees and whatnot, but sometimes you can't tell if you if you don't get out there and look. So this is a really cool place if you want to learn about trees. And for you, you know, you got kids and you maybe you're in an urban environment. This is very accessible easy trails and you got all of this identification your kids are going to learn something they're going to develop an appreciation for the woods and maybe the parents taking them to mm -hmm. get an appreciation and the, the cool thing about a place like this is that you can come here in the winter so you can see what the trees look like in the winter which is very different from what they look like in the summer you love this guy what we love in this guy this guy is a, a proper ceases field investigator so you got a sighting in, in the bristol area we're going to send him out to you so dave you've been around traveled the country with your band and just traveled for leisure and fun and whatnot. Well, what, what do you think? What's the squatchiest state you've been to? Well, I would say, and I didn't spend a lot of time in the woods up there, but I would say the Oregon area. Oregon, right? There you go, the north, yeah, the northwest over there. Yeah. Northwest, that's what I meant. Right. Uh, I'm an expert. Uh, yeah. But also, like, the Pennsylvania, New York area also as well. Yeah. And Pennsylvania especially, that's a really... Kind of an untapped place yeah and there's so much wilderness and mountain ranges in there it's it's right you got the alleghenies right that's oh, pennsylvania yeah. and yep. of course you got the um the resort ones over there yep. Yep. the poconos mm -hmm. and there's a reservoir in pennsylvania that has a lake monster i think they call him red or something like that big red we'll get we'll get that up there but they have an interesting lake monster there's one in uh Two lakes I've been to have lake monsters that are traditionally associated. One is, uh, well, three actually. Of course, Lake Champlain up in Vermont. Yep. Then, but the Lake Memphre Magog as well. Memphre. Memphre, right. Yes. And then there's one out in uh, in Ohio, uh, northern Ohio. I'm trying to remember what town it's in, but I remember the the name of the monster was Lemmy. 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 Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> And what about Oklahoma? You know about that? Like, they got like that, like a freshwater kraken, like a huge octopus. Oh, no, I haven't seen that. Yeah, and one of these Oklahoma lakes, it, they're not sure, but there's a couple people that died. They made a, a real cheesy movie. If you're going to make a movie about a cryptid, make sure it's cheesy. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like even cheesier than Blair Witch. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there's a couple people that died in this reservoir. Oh, wow. You know, reservoirs are real interesting because uh, they're man made. But there seems to be an awful lot of cryptids in them. Well, all reservoirs are basically damned in some way or another, right? Right. right. So when man comes in and does this, it actually really messes up the, the wildlife. It really messes up the area. In some ways, it dries out water sources for certain animals. It creates more places for other animals to live. So then you would probably upset any, any special intelligent creature in the area. And you're going to trap it. Yeah. Let's say let's say something in all right. Let's take Lake Champlain. Of course, the St. Lawrence Waterway goes right there. That spills ultimately into the ocean. So then you have anadromous fish, and you got things that are going to follow those fish. Mm -hmm. Let's say there's a possible holdover, and these things. Well, let's say they got to breed somehow if they're going to have a, continu a continuous population. These reservoirs come along, maybe they trap them when they're used, and they sort of become landlocked, like salmon, and have to adapt. There you go, there's your, there's your trapped lake monster. We got photographs um, from the West Hartford Compensating Reservoir. Oh, if wow. you go back to one of our early, early videos, <clears throat> one of our very first ones, we posted photographs that this woman took. And I did speak with her, but she didn't want to go on camera, not for nothing. I don't blame her. West Hartford, she doesn't want to be the lake monster woman. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm willing to be the lake monster woman, so, you know, they have a visitor center there. Colin right? identifies as the lake monster woman. <laughs> I, I, I need my own bathroom now. That's right. I, I want access to everything. That's right. Life from death. This is really cool. Yeah, this is it. And we love our kiosks here. Mm-hmm. Look at this guy. Fisher. They're usually dark brown. This guy appears almost solid black. They're, of course, in the, the largest member of the weasel family in the Northeast. They are. 
and from snags to riches. All right. These guys right here, this white-breasted nushatch, they're nasty on our bird feeder. You oh, ever, yeah. You ever seen them? No. And they do this with their wings. Oh, wow. And they're like, you know, they're scaring away, like, bigger birds. And <laughs> You put up a bird feeder and watch these guys. They will, like, they'll scare away, like, blue jays and stuff. And they do this. And I'm wow. telling you, I love them, but they're little shit. So we got a little... Today's episode is, is uh, not G-rated. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, parental guidance is strongly suggested. <laughs> this is for my nephew Connor, who I was telling him they they don't have skunk cabbage or not that much back e back home mm -hmm. in Quebec where I'm from in Maine. But um, I was saying that it's edible, and he was holding a leaf and he just started chomping on it, and I was like, except it's a little skunky. So I asked him, and it, we got it on video, right? We got that. Yeah, we do. Um, but I'll go ahead. Skunk cabbage is, is a perfectly edible green, you sure? I'm good. Camera person? Yeah. Dog? Mary? <laughs> One try? No? You smell that? That's, Yo, I'm well... That's a, mm -hmm. This is this is the real skunk. Yeah. Okay, you guys, this is not the, this is not the other skunk. This is the real skunk. Real skunk cabbage. This this here is 520, not 420. <laughs> Alright, you ready? I'm ready. Mmm, that is... Oh! <laughs> Oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. it smells worse when you chew it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't stand too close to me. Uh, it oh, is God. edible, but I it just do not. I do not recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's fresh, though. That's organic. You sure? Oh, I'm good. I mean, I'm sure Whole Foods would sell this for like $12.99 a pound. It's got a nice stinginess, too. Yeah. It's like painful. Like any like little cuts you got. You sure? Camera person, Some people out there. Wow, it really, when you bite into it, it, it smells. Yeah. You're gonna be tasting that for it burns. You get a nice burning sensation with it. Any kind of got, I noticed that it got little cuts on here now. They're saying I have bad breath. <laughs> and you know, squatch is associated, a lot of cryptids are associated with bad odors. That is a mm. That's for you, Cecil's people. I want somebody to show me, send us videos of them eating it, right? Like if you're a prepper and you actually eat it, and you don't mind your mouth totally sticking, it's a nice, almost numb, like Novocaine. Mm. Yeah, make sure. There it is. Colin Demi didn't make it back today from the uh, <laughs> skunk cabbage poisoning. So, um,. <laughs> That's the last time I will ever be demonstrating that for you people out there. So I hope you enjoyed that. I recommend it. If Dave comes out with us on another episode, you people out there in Jesus, let us know what you think about our guest out there. You want to see him more with us? Yeah, I think you do. So this is obviously a gypsy moth nest. You can see one of them up there. Mm -hmm. Gypsy moth caterpillars. Um, some people call them tent caterpillars or, or other things. These guys were genetically modified in the late 1700s. Not genetic, they were, they were hybridized. They didn't have genetics back then, but, um, and they escaped. This, they wanted to, this was bred with uh, one type of moth, and then on, uh, the silkworm. And they wanted to make a native version of silk, but this silk is too weak. It's not like the uh, silkworms. So it was unsuccessful. But what what happened here is that these escaped and this was in Connecticut. They escaped. Oh yeah, it was a big deal. And now they're deforesting. Probably one of the very first cases of invasive species or modified species. And they're just, I mean, you add that up with the boring insects and all the other invasives and our native our native environment is really under attack and very threatened and it's very serious. Uh, so here's another forage base is raspberry leaf. It's very edible, not just the berries, the entire plant is edible. A little bit of time. Very woody. Kind of astringent. Feels good on the blisters in my mouth from the skunk cabbage. It's highly medicinal and um, you can eat the whole entire plant, but that wasn't bad. Now you know a cure for it. If you're out there and you've made the stupid mistake of eating skunk cabbage and you get the burns in your mouth, then this astringent property is going to soothe that. Hey, ah, oh, oh. oh, look at this here. 
What do you do? Why? What's the purpose? Don't roll in that. I'm gonna go roll in it. Yeah. All right, come on. Don't get stuck in there. Oh. This is what. Oh, look at this. Look at this. No, don't you dare. This is why you don't bring this dog. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> this was cedar. It's related to cedar, um, but it's called princess pine. And a lot of people will make wreaths out of this, but you really shouldn't. You make wreaths because it grows on a vine. It's the only pine tree that grows on a vine, and you can pull it up and just wrap it around a wreath wire. Oh, wow. But they're now somewhat endangered, and you really shouldn't do that because you're you're killing whole trees at a time. These just, these are about as big as they get, and that's a, that's a tree. That's a pine tree, which means it's probably edible, but I'm not going to risk any more of that today. My, I'm still having the wonderful effects of um, skunk cabbage. You know, if you got to pull a tooth out there in nature and there's some skunk cabbage available, that's the way to go. It'll give you that nice burning sensation. It got some blisters going on and you won't you won't worry at all about the extraction. <laughs> We're going in there. <laughs> uh, Rocky, have you seen any kind of puck wedgie looking like a a humanoid porcupine or anything like that walking around here? No, you abducted any hikers that had a point of separation from their group and maybe they disappeared or anything like that? Man, maybe you got any forest lights going on in here? Yeah? Forest lights. I've seen them. You seen forest lights, Dave? Um, I have. You want to talk about that for a second? Um, uh, I can't remember. I think in Vermont. There was a kid in Vermont. And we used to explore the woods out there. And I remember there were a lot of koi dogs in the area as well. So it was, you didn't really want to spend a lot of time. But I remember as a young kid seeing floating lights in the forest. Colored or white? I'm kind of colorblind. So okay. it's got to be really br vibrant for me to really see it. So like with lights. So it was like, I would say, it was off-white is what I would say. It was like... Um, could have been greenish, could have been whatever, but there's a there's a history of that in uh, in uh, Burlington, Connecticut. There's a place called Green Lady Cemetery. Yes, yeah. yes, and that's known for having lights, swamp gas, also racism and other things like that. There's all kinds of crazy stories about that place, but if you haven't visited, you probably should at some point. But, yeah. We'll check it out. Um, I saw forest lights in uh, Black Ledge Falls. I was I was doing some experiments with stone structures. I was building a miniature like a Stonehenge. Okay, oh, cool. I built a nine foot uh, circle with a center stone and the four cardinal points. And this thing took almost a week in the woods to build. Wow! It's still there. It's awesome. I know where it is. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's very cool. I wanted to see if it had any anomalous properties. Well, cell phones were losing their charge. Um, compasses were they weren't spinning around, but they. They couldn't really settle on a point. And uh, then I was there late one night, much later. The park closes at sunset. Like, oh, in Connecticut, you got to stop that crap, right, Dave? Stop yeah. that close at sunset yep. stuff. Yep. Other states you can go 24-7. What? Oh, my goodness. Cut it off. Anyhow, I'm at this place I'm not supposed to be at. Uh, might have been Black Ledge Falls, and it might not have been. <laughs> might have been a private property that I was allowed on. Anyhow, um, yes, I did see on the way out, and I had someone with me forest lights coming up. so i'm watching these lights come down these ones were were brightly colored there was red yellow and blue and they were going up and down i thought maybe it's just people hiking in the woods and i'm like no but then it came over a pond and it floated over, oh, over wow. across the pond over to where i was and uh, the person i was with got freaked out because they didn't you know they weren't into all that stuff right uh, they didn't have quite the open mind, and we had to leave. And they followed us out and stopped and hovered at a certain point when we got close to the road. Oh, wow. They were with us for maybe 45 minutes. And they they were clearly deep in those Glastonbury woods coming our way. They were heading directly for us. Wow. Uh, and it made it, – it, it was a very uneasy feeling. And freaking ticks. Another one. Oh my goodness, I got another one on me. 
So this is the tick episode. Uh, we're demonstrating to you how to how to first of all get them on you, and then how to get them off of you. And when you go home from these places, check yourself well because uh, you don't want you don't want a gift from Nazi Germany, Lyme disease. That's right. High pitch. Uh, so our, our special guest here, Dave Connolly, is going to do a howl for us. So you said it's your first time howling? Yeah. You did put your deposit down for your howling therapy session. So <laughs> get your money's worth. I and did. We'll give you, we got a real special going on. We'll drop it down. Anybody, uh, you have first time howlers, we'll drop it down to fifty nine ninety nine a session. So uh, that's cash. All right. Howl away. Where's the water over there? Yeah. I'll drink the water. Maybe it'll carry. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> that was a northeastern squatch howl. You said, that was the blue scale. What's the blue scale? And the blue scale? It's a, a five four. What do you mean, like the the notes? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a, it's a minor pentatonic scale that has a pass and tell between I think the three and the five. So there's a you talked about Oregon. There's a there's a well known squatcher on YouTube, and I forgive me, I watch a lot of videos and I can't remember his name, um, but I watched one of his lectures. And halfway through, he said, I'm a blues musician. And he said, I recorded the Squatch song. So he played them. Um, but we were talking about the, the pentonic, pentatonic scale. Pentatonic scale. Well, so, yeah, well, the blues scale. So this, this Bigfoot researcher, I'm, I'm listening to his thing. And he, he recorded it and he played it. And he goes, I listened to this unit and I recognized. And he said, it was on that scale, the blue scale. And um, he said that that's one of the ways they communicate. Mm -hmm. You think you could scream a blue scale for us? No, I don't think so. I'm not much of a singer. <laughs> you have a person you want to let a howl fly? No? <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen today. Woo! You know what's great about a place like this? Is that you just know that somebody's down there here and it's like, yeah. did you hear that? <laughs> and we were at Mohawk Mountain howling away as we like to do and um somebody started howling back to, to us and we could tell it was a person yeah, yeah. and i'm sure they were like did you hear that um but where we are there's not a lot of people but we sure do have an abundance of ticks yes we do we're gonna get dave to smack a tree with a well we went off the beaten path and that's so. what you want to do right yeah you're not going to see him on the beaten path this place has puck wedgie written all over it my friend Nicholas Robert Grossman, you want to go pucking? This is the place. This this is the place to get your puck on. So, yeah. You know puck wedgie? No. Um, they're like little people of, oh, yeah, of our area, that. right? Yeah, I've heard of that. And um, like like all the little people, you know, when you're that small, you gotta sort of be mischievous, and, mm -hmm. and you know, you can't just be a jolly old fellow like Bigfoot. You know, he's big enough that he don't care. This is snappy in half. Have you ever heard of the village of the little people? We've been there. Yeah. We did pretty, an episode on pretty that. Pretty creepy, huh? Very creepy. When I when we went there, the, you, everybody got to check it out. Dave, check out our video on this. Too, I though. saw. I, I did see your video. I'm remembering it. Did you have an experience there? No. Nope. But the way they built that thing, I'm in construction. Mm -hmm. That's been my job for a long time. And whoever built that overbuilt it. Wow. It's 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 insanely built. So let me do my sukalos. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get my best sukulos. It's as if they built it in a manner that made it as difficult as possible. As if only master builders built that place. Why would you build um, terracotta piping and, and stainless steel and cast iron and, uh, and these little things? Why wouldn't you just make a facade? So you have to wonder. There's my David Childers. You have to wonder if it's not some kind of ancient technology in <laughs> We love your history channel. And, and Sukalos, you're paying way too much for your hair because I got this going on natural. Okay? Right. Natural. I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. It's aliens, yeah. We're not saying <laughs> it is aliens, but it definitely is. Uh, so twitching. Twitching is when you grab a stick and you bend it. And of course, you know, if you bend something like this, mm -hmm. your arm gets tired. It's just going to go down and 
you start drilling in Connecticut, it won't take long until you strike water. No, but, um, yeah. We're not demonstrating twitching. It's pointing at the pond anyway. Is this a good smack and stick for you? Sure. All right, Dave's going to do a smack. We like to do either one and then two or whatever you think, Dave. Dave, are you finding this therapeutic? I like being outside. You notice how after you do that, it just the woods feel different. Yeah. You know, they get that like you get that now I'm being watched thing going on. Oh, we're gonna get in there somewhere. Where which way are we going, Dave? Well, we can take this trail until it's end, or we can go back and uh, look at main trail, huh? Came a person saying go back because I don't know. We've only had ten thousand ticks on us yeah, today yeah. so far. So I want to show you a forge base here. Um, it's a goldfish. So a goldfish is 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 a well-known squash forage base. I'm gonna go ahead and eat this. No, I'm not. <laughs> I've had enough. I've you had enough. squash. Yeah, right there. So when you see goldfish, you know you're in squash territory. Dave, so let's, let's squash a meat of this place. What do you think, Dave? Let's let's put on the squash. You know, we talked about it. I think I put this at about a two. Two. Why is it a two? Uh eh, a lot. Too many people. Too right. close to the road. Right. Um. But like we talked about, it does connect with the Nassahegan, which is much deeper. Right. So there's a lot of mileage. Right. That's like a 4.5 Nassahegan and Punxsus and and all the all the you know just one forest after another. This goes this blue trail pretty much starts here. I was telling you I mm -hmm. looked it up. It pretty much starts here in Session Woods and goes up to the Massachusetts line. You know the online information is not mm -hmm. the greatest. It probably goes past that. Sure. The trail just stops there. Massachusetts line. Let's stop. Just like Sasquatch, it recognizes state borders. Anyhow, yeah, look out for goldfish. Uh, that's a nice forge base for squatch and, um, you know, your stoners and whatnot. And we'll, we'll see if we can't rustle up a, a pot smoking hippie here. <laughs> so um, we're loving it. You know, so, you know, Sessions Woods, you get a two, but on the uh, tourist meter, you're getting a solid five because this is, this is really a good, look at the kiosk. This is some of the best kiosks we've ever seen. And um, I was talking to our guest, Dave, and uh, he's, you know, I was saying that the stinging now. So skunk cabbage sting lasts about 45 minutes. And uh, it's it's a powerful sting. But then Dave was telling me out on the West Coast, was it Las Vegas, Los Angeles? Yeah, Dave? not that area, in the desert area. In the desert area that these people there, they're, they're one-upping me. And, and I'm not having it. And I'm going to pose a challenge to them. I got a real good one. So it's like a food thing, right? Tell us up a little bit about this. Well, it's not a food thing. They just see how, who can fit the most scorpions in their mouth. While they're stinging you. While they're stinging you, yeah. They're live scorpions. And they just put them in their mouth until whoever hits the most or passes out and has to be hospitalized. Because that happens too. I got a better one for you. All right. The scorpion thing ain't nothing. Random mushrooms. Oh, that's a random. <laughs> we're going to demonstrate that. Um, woolly bear caterpillars. Ooh. I one time was, I picked one up and this, this guy was from the Caribbean and uh, he's like never seen one. I said, oh, and they're delicious. And I just jokingly po poked it in my mouth. Well, see, says people, I, this is right up there with skunk cabbage. This, and it's way past scorpions. Those little fuzzy things are like little fiberglass things. Yeah. And they have like venom in them mm -hmm. and they shoot them out. Oh, and uh, my whole mouth was filled with these glassy spikes that broke up. Oh, my God. S my mouth swelled all up, and it didn't go away for a couple of days. I had a hard time eating and drinking. As I would drink, it would go down my throat and cause oh, more God. irritation. And so there you go. There is the woolly bear challenge, <laughs> you TikTokers, and, and the random mushroom and the challenge. the random mushroom challenge. Dave gave you the random mushroom challenge. That's right. Listen, we are not responsible for the random mushroom challenge. Right? We're, right, we're saying don't do it. Don't do it. Don't don't do it. And if you right. don't do it, send us a video of it. And will it, as you're dying, we'll identify this the the, the right. genus for you. Right. Wait, save your stupid behavior for uh, National Lick a Toad Day. Oh, 
Oh, look at this. Satanic activity. I don't know why you people associate uh, the pagan pentacle with, with Satanism. It has nothing to do with it. <clears throat> yeah, they definitely don't want us to go out there. No. Yeah, yeah we're going. Uh, this here is an exercise barrier. That's what this is. So you get your get your leg exercises. Can the camera person, can you make it over this? disregard that barrier. The barrier is just saying, hi, come visit me. Um, this bush right here will be loaded in berries for you. You've got enough for a nice dessert there. It was built by the Boy Scouts of America Troop 170 Eagle Scout Project 2015. Hey, get over yeah, here. Eagle Scouts usually do a big project. One of my friends built a big gazebo on a town green for come his on. project. So it's pretty cool. Hey, this is a great place for blueberries. Look at them all. Yeah. I think that's construction. Yeah. Because you can hear pauses and it starts again. And I hear machinery. Yeah, so I think it's like somebody's putting a new nail in. And... It's still cool. It's still cool. It's still splash. This is such a great... Yeah. This looks like wilderness. I was just saying, this is like where you see a moose. Yeah. And there are moose in Connecticut. Yeah, you see an island that moves. In the yeah. Water. And they come up with the stuff dangling all over them. Yeah. Leeches all stuck to them. Yeah. You know, when you're an animal like that, when you're a 600-pound mammal... You don't care about ticks and leeches. And they're not smart. No, they're just big and the the word term the word moose comes from an Algonquin word which means stick eater. Stick eater. Yeah. I'll I'll demonstrate that for you later. <laughs> I won't. I, I'm still having fun with that. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Well, we just kind of drop in here. Scat of some kind. That looks like coyote because it's got fur in it here I'll, I'll pick it up and uh, yeah that's probably coyote right there I can see some hairs in there you see the fur mm -hmm. that's usually coyote got some kind of chipmunk or rabbit or something yeah. so there's definitely a lot of coyotes here where there's coyotes there's all manner of, of we got acorns all over the, this is a this is a butternut, so there's a lot of forage base here, blueberries. If it wasn't for the people and, and the proximity to civilization, this place would be off the charts on the Squatchometer. Wetlands for sure. Yeah. This is cool. You know what? Just come check it out. If you want to go hiking and a lot of access and uh, you want ticks all over you, just leave your insect repellent at home and come here and step off trail just for one second and then report to us that, yeah, you did get Lyme disease and send us a thank you note, we appreciate it. We're looking out for you people out there. If you want to experience Lyme disease, come on out with us. So what do you think? They talk about, you know, you know we were just mentioning David Pilates and the Missing 4 one. They talk about boulder fields boulder like this. Boulder fields, water, boots. Yeah. I, I, uh, What's your take on it? Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I think... I like his attitude. I like the way he does it because yeah. he's he's looking for similarities. Right. And when he talks about it, he doesn't talk about the really weird stuff that happens. He talks about how weird it is that 
all the same stuff happens in the same areas all the time. National parks, which we yeah. don't have. So I would say, I, you know, if you're in Connecticut, I would say state parks. Yeah, that, that would be. That's our yeah. closest thing. But yeah. what do you, what's your take on the whole missing thing? Well, here's, here's, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think that it's important that people are going missing and the circumstances coincide in a very interesting manner. And to say it's just some crazy person in all of these parks that's doing it or to say it's a cryptid. I mean, I, I'd say that's a, as valid an explanation as any. Um, some people think it's UFOs. I don't know. I just know what's happening. So, um, you know, the, the thing is, though, before I, I was aware of all this stuff and, and got myself educated on this before missing 411 thing, I would just hike and just, because yeah. as you know, Dave, you could just be standing here. One of us could just go around the corner, say, I got to take a leak or something, go around the corner and you're gone. Yep. And we come up five, six, seven seconds, maybe less than 30 seconds behind you and you are gone. Yep. And then they'll find your boots, what, a week or two later, 12 miles away. Yep. Sometimes years later, these cases where um, the bodies were actually found by people who dreamt about the area and people who didn't have any association with the person. And there were several counts, and it was always the same kind of thing. Same with the boots, the rocks, the water. And uh, the amazing thing was they find the bodies in areas, in half the time, in areas that were already meticulously searched. Many times over. Um, we're having a great day. So when you hike, you know, is it cheesy? You get around these boulders, you get around water, maybe stay with, you know, have someone in eye contact. Don't have a POS, as we call it, a point of separation. And uh, you know what? And you, what do you think about the glimmer people? You know about the glimmer people? Uh, I haven't heard too much about it. That whole like them. trans, like that movie Predator, where yeah. he's up in the trees mm -hmm. and it's sort of like transparent, and uh, they they call them glimmer people. But if you look up in the trees, and you don't sit there, you don't notice anything until um, you just like heat waves, right? But it's it's too cold. Heat waves are associated with the ground, yeah, not treetops, and they just they move from tree to tree, and the trees move with them. So pay attention to the tops of the trees when you're out there. Glimmer people, stay with 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 an eyesight of somebody when you're hiking. Yep. Check out Four One One. You want to get scared? Watch a couple episodes, then go hiking on your own, willy nilly. <laughs> Watch out behind you, you got a dog coming. Uh-oh. You staying down here, the boy? We love our towers here at CSIS. We're gonna go see if we can see something up there. The kids are Set the fires. Yeah, this is where we set the place on fire. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a lady slipper orchid. It's the only orchid that grows wild in Connecticut. They're very endangered. Here's another one. And there's a huge one over there. Right here. Unfortunately, these plants are also highly medicinal. And people take them for their for their health benefits. It's a beautiful orchid. In my opinion, this is the most beautiful of all orchids, and it's Connecticut's orchid, the Lady Slipper. This, this, this place is a lot of fun. I gotta tell you, you got a family, got kids, or you just want a nice place to hike and live in the Bristol area, come check it out. This waterfall is magnificent.
Well, so we're just here. Um, probably after this, we're gonna we're gonna kind of wrap it up here today. But Dave, so he's taking a video. We want to thank our guest today, Dave Connolly. Uh, he, he showed you. He talked about his bands and his music. Get out here, and uh, we're having a great day. Remember. Send us your reports, check us out on social media, and uh, get out there, because that's what it's all about. So we're just about at the end of our um, on location here at Session Woods, and we round the corner from a very extensive hike. And uh, what do we see up in the trees but black vultures, buzzards. And, uh, you know, they are just the most magnificent birds in the sky. Eagles fly, they own the sky, but vultures, they are the dancers of the sky. And there they are. They're magnificent. So this place very very cool I see an edible plant here edible huh curled dock that's nice that's got that spinachy flavor Dave you want to try some no thanks camera person hmm? I haven't had a leafy green in a year that's right he's probably little it's a lot like um it's got a little peppery kind of like arugula that's real nice and and the roots highly medicinal so there you go you see it there curled dock nice in a survival situation can save your life. And if you don't make it, Dave said <laughs> these, uh, our hike was so long today that the vultures are here waiting for us to die. Yeah. And they're, so they're getting ready to sleep. This one's, just check it out. Check it out. Look at that. Wow. Okay, Cesis. The dancers of the sky. They love, they love their own company. And they serve a very important um, role in nature, of course, getting rid of the dead animals and um, so that we don't spread diseases. So we had a great time, 2.0 in the Squatcher Meter. Our friend Dave Connolly's with us, musician. You know, check him out and support him, and we'll see you out there.